Welcome to That's Why Podcast with Patricia and Anna, the show where we arouse your curiosity while we dull your senses. Hello, welcome to That's Why Show. I'm Anna. And I'm Patricia. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome now that I had a nice full meal. Anna, oh, this good. amazing. Guys, Anna's amazing. <laughs> she feeds me every time I come here to do the show. Well, it's fun to cook for you because yeah. I know that you're not like, I won't eat that because I, well, actually, you won't eat spicy. Yeah, I can't do spicy. Yeah, <laughs> but, my tongue breaks out. But Anna cooked this amazing ramen and you should, you should it was oh. like going to a restaurant, better than a restaurant because oh. it was done with some love. So that thank was good. You, thank, thank you. Thank you. So today I have a shout out. My friend Megan recently listened to us and she loves our show. So thank you, Megan, for giving me that feedback and we we appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Another thank you listener very added. Much. Yes. <laughs> One down, a million, a million. and somewhat to go. <laughs> um, and I have a shout out too. We're going to do it now. Yes. Okay. Our shout out is to Don Rice, Hello. my friend Don. Don put this out to his uh, co workers and he said, listening to a friend of mine podcast, I find them very interesting, real talk, and topic that you can relate to. I encourage you to listen to a few to form your opinion so i like that little challenge yes and so he put a picture of our that we have on spotify but i loved it Aww, so thank you don thank you're you, wonderful don. Yeah. yeah it's always nice to hear that people like the show because yes. for us we're like oh we enjoy talking about these topics but we want other people to enjoy it too <laughs> of course absolutely oh my gosh and talk about topics today we're talking about <laughs> fetishes <laughs> so do you have a fetish patricia you know what no we yeah. we i feel like we determined that mm -hmm. no even I though one either. in six people have a fetish that's a large number so am i in denial but i really don't think so mm -mm. talk to me anna what is a fetish in the late 15th century europeans wore charms or amulets called fetishes but now the current term of the fetish is yeah. sexual desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree to a particular object item of clothing part of the body etc mm, okay yeah and then they are divided into two groups one is form fetish in which the form and shape of the object, such as a pair of shoes or boots, are the utmost important for arousal. And the second fetish is media fetish, in which great significance is attached to the material, such as leather or lace, from which the fetish is made. There's a Russian physiologist named Ivan Pavlov in the early 1900s. He created classical conditioning and this helped to explain oh sorry that's my cat because don't hi charlie <laughs> <laughs> they're um, joining in we also have we don't want her to feel neglected we have charlie the cat and tootsie, tootsie. the dog yes okay <laughs> um so he explains sexual fetishism called classical conditioning and i'm not sure if you recall but a lot of people might you actually brought it up pavlov's dog right and what he did was he had these dogs when they would have their food they would be salivating so then he conditioned them okay i'm going to start a bell so now they don't see the food but when they hear the bell they'll start salivating they still salivate yes. as if it yes and then they mm -hmm. would take the bell away and then they would salivate when they saw the person feeding them like, mm. oh, that person feeds me. So then they would salivate with that person. Okay. And sexual stimulation and the fetish object have that connection. So that's how he studied it was uh -huh. how the conditioning can relate to the sexual arousal. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Now, could it be also an experience? So a conditioning would take a certain period of time. So oh, we'll, okay. we'll unpack that and we'll kind of have a little mini discussion about that. Yes, absolutely. So the first thing I thought about when I thought about fetishes are feet fetishes. I feel like that's very common. Yes. And then another one is BDSM. Okay. And BDSM is bondage and discipline and sadism and masochism. Mm -hmm. I know people who like BDSM, but it's not their ultimate arousal. Do you know what I mean? Like well, I've always worn... heard of S&M. 
even Rihanna's song, S S M M. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, <laughs> but the, I feel like that was so common. But the B D for me is a recent. You know, bondage is not that much, uh-huh. but the discipline, the, it's its more of an extreme form. Does that make yes, sense? Yes. Um, when we just looked up the definition, they said that BDSM is also known as oh, dominating, dominatrix. Dominatrix, thing. thank you, mm. and submissive. Gotcha. Yes, those are interchangeable. Mm, okay. But okay. I saw some documentary about this guy that was into that Okay, and his... Dominatrix, domin- I can never say that yeah, word. Dominatrix. Dominatrix. Yeah. She was from another state. They did everything through Zoom, but she had to know what he was doing when he woke up. He had a tracker on his phone. What? When he ate wh- every single minute, and he would have to tell her, and he loved it. And you, first yes. of all, I'm like, okay, so that's how they would pull that off long distance. Yes. <laughs> right? I'm like, how are you going to smack them from such a far away place? Yeah. But then, okay, so they like being controlled. Yes, he loved it. And they both agree on it. And I want to say that that's any type of fetish, as long as you communicate with that person, yes. do it. Right, right. It, it, two consenting adults mm-hmm. who agree that this is how they want their relationship to go. No judgment. And remember peeing in the shower episode? Yes. You brought up the golden showers. Mm-hmm. Some people like to be peed on and some people like to pee on people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so do it. I think it's fine. <laughs> I don't. No judgment no there. Judgment. I wouldn't be able to do that though. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't know. Well, one of the fetishes here, I, and we'll, we're going to unpack that a little bit later as well. This girl was saying that, that she could see how she could she could be a participant in it if she were the one doing this one particular fetish mm-hmm. to the other person, mm-hmm. but not Reversed. it being done. So for her, mm-hmm. her, she was basically like, if I met somebody and they were being honest, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know, fifth date. They're mm-hmm. like, you know what? I've been wanting to do this. <laughs> and and they were like, would you mind doing this to me? She was like, you know what? I'll entertain that for a minute. Mm-hmm. Let me see. And like you said, Anna, in previous shows, I'll try anything twice, right? No, five times. Oh, damn. Five okay. or six times. Me, me is just twice. <laughs> um, but with her, she said, but if, if he, the person would approach her and they'd say, can I do this to you? Then she'd be like, no, that's crossing the line. Because that's not something that I'm into. But she doesn't mind appeasing the other person, other person and giving them what they want. So that's really an interesting concept. Okay, let me ask you. Would you pee on someone? Oh, wow. Um, I could see me doing that. Me too. I really, I I really, <laughs> if they really wanted it and, and you know, with the right... Um, liquid juice, uh-huh. right? Or liquid courage. <laughs> um, I might be like, okay, let would, me see how that works. Would you want to be peed on? No. That warm liquid coming from, you know. Mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. interesting because as we, there's so many things that you can do sexually where people would be like, whoa, that's mm-hmm. off limits or whatever. When you give a guy a blowjob, you're, you've are you got his, you Juices. know. His, well, and, and not only that, but obviously the mechanism that he uses to urinate yes. with. It's all up in there. Yes. But the difference is that's, I, I guess in my mind, I don't connect the two. You know what I'm saying? So for, yeah. For me, I don't like things that are sticky or like if I have a sleeve that's wet, mm-hmm. I change my shirt immediately. Oh, I don't okay. like that feeling of like a wet sleeve. Uh huh. Or another thing is when I would take hair extensions out and if they were the tape extensions, that gooiness on my fingers, I would hate that. It would make me so angry. Oh, and wow. Yes, I hate sticky stuff. It would stuff. take you to that level. It, yeah. If you want me to get into a fight, <laughs> put something sticky on oh me and I will beat up anybody. <laughs> that's a lot. I hate Anna. it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sticky. do you want to piss Anna off? <laughs> Let's go put this sticky no. thing on her. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. Ugh. Huh, that's um, interesting. Okay. Because it's like, it's just like, quick, quick. I don't know. Isn't I don't that know. interesting how some things like turn, make you feel a certain way? Yes. You know, I don't like dirty mirrors. It makes me mad. I'm like, why can't you clean your mirror, yo? Oh my gosh, that's so funny. And I think it's the vanity, the vain side of me that looks in a mirror and it, I don't like it. I don't like it. Do you also like to Windex your windows and have that really clear? And If you it- went to my house right now, you'd probably think no. But yes, <laughs> I like glass to be clean. I hear you. You could look 
Yes, and Anna's, are... we're here, and it's very pristine. <laughs> I, if I Thank see, like, you, a Anna. speck of hairspray, I'm like, oh. oh, yeah. You know what's really good? Off topic. Have you heard of Norwex? Oh, girl. Yeah, Oh, yeah. my gosh. It's the best. That product is amazing. That would right. save you money on paper towels. Yes. And Windex. Yes. And you don't need, no. you don't wait, you just need water. Exactly. It's environmentally friendly yes. to the max. Yes. I love that. Plug and for Norwex. I know. <laughs> If you would like to sponsor yes. us, <laughs> we are taking sponsors. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we digress. But oh, anyway, yeah, okay. So feet, BDSM, those are the typical things. Right. But there's something that are called feeders. Have you heard of feeders? No. F-E-E. How do you spell it? F-E-E-D-E-R-S. Okay, no. They are people that get aroused by feeding people. And there's this one girl, I forgot her name, but she's probably 500 pounds. Her boyfriend is really skinny and he made this, you know, the Blendtec, the big old yeah. Blendtec? He filled that up with like whipped cream, ice cream, all of this stuff, made her a strawberry shake or whatever, and took a funnel and fed it to her. Like you're making foie gras for a goose or something. Oh my gosh. Yes. And she ate the whole thing. It was like more than half a gallon of ice cream. In one sitting. Guys, you wish you could see my face. Yes. (laughs) And so he got pleasure out of funneling this down her throat. Yes. And she has Did she gag? No, no, she loves it because she's over 500 pounds and she has a website. I mean, she makes good money. There was a picture of her. Off of people watching her eat? eating or anything sexual there's a picture of her you know she's a big girl where she put a ding dong in her belly button <laughs> it fit in her belly oh my button gosh. where'd the ding yes. dong go where'd it go right that's something where you just and, and mm-hmm. man she is making money and you know what it's, she, I that's can, amazing i can see the not the sexual arousal but i can see the curiosity appealing. right yes because i actually like when you were eating that chocolate bar and you're like, can you hear me eating this? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I like that sound. <laughs> that so when you so were doing that, I was like, like, oh, yeah, keep here's going. another one. <laughs> I'm like, Anna, why are you feeding me so much? What's, what's keep eating on? this. Yes. <laughs> She's stuffing me like a but yes, Thanksgiving like, I love turkey. That. Like, or that one um, huh. ASMR. Have you heard of that? No. It's when people use the microphone to make sounds and it could be like, paper crinkling against the microphone or them whispering softly and they're just you know i love that it sounds it's not sexual for me no but, but me, you enjoy that yes or like if they if they have like see they'll have like these little things and i'm gonna pop do, it i we're doing asmr right now <laughs> yeah okay so let's hear like, it like like okay who, we want to know <laughs> Any of you listeners who got aroused from that, please write in. We want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. But yeah, what? That. that is so interesting. And I remember being a kid, I would put my ear to my dad's face while he's chewing. And I would love that. If he's eating potato chips, I'd be like, oh, that, I like that. And what you were just doing right now, like how different is it? Like I love those things that like when... The little poppy. So we're talking about, what are they called? What is it? The plastic? ASMR. No, no, oh. this plastic that you pop. Bubble wrap? Yeah. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, sorry mm-hmm. guys, I'm getting old. <laughs> I just turned 52. Anyway, um, but the bubble wrap, there's something really satisfying with popping each one. Yes. And I wonder if... All of this is connected, but some, it's like alcoholism, right? There's Mm -hmm. people who are alcoholics that call themselves alcoholics that can still function and hold a job and have relationships. And then there are others that are completely dysfunctional that can't function and whatever, Mm -hmm. right? So, but it's still the same thing, but to a different degree. Mm -hmm. So point being that with the fetishes... Obviously, there's degrees of it because to me, this is not necessarily called a fetish, but there's some connection to the mind Mm -hmm. of that feeling of popping it and and enjoying it. It really is pleasurable. Now that I get aroused over it, that's a whole different story, but Mm -mm. right? Mm -hmm. And then there's another one. Okay, so feeders. Okay. They're also called chubby chasers or fat chubby chasers. chasers. <laughs> my friend. 
<laughs> my friend actually she's like you know i love chubby men <laughs> oh I was she's like, a chubby yes. chaser <laughs> yeah i guess she calls herself a chubby chaser too but not to that extent um okay you should so- ask her if she's a feeder if she likes to watch men eat or if she likes to feed men i will ask find out i want to know okay because if one in six people have a fetish is she the is she the one is she the one (laughs) out of the however many people i know there has to be yes okay i will do that and necrophiliac okay you know what that is that's the the sexual arousal of dead people of sleeping now is it having actual sex or just feeling there's like what actually having sex there was a guy oh i should have wrote notes on this guy but he had a disease like some type of bacterial growth and he went to the doctor and that bacteria happens after decomposition so they found out that he was having and i think he was a mortician or something but then they found out that he was having sex with these dead people which is you were the one that mentioned that i you said that that's against the law it's like defiling a corpse or defiling yeah wow that is incredible now how does a woman have sex with a dead body like how does he get it up i don't know if that would (laughs) what if she used it what it if she used the appendages, like the fingers, or what oh, if you wow. know? I don't know. That's I didn't even think about. Yeah, that. we didn't go. We didn't Ooh. dig that deep. We were like, we need to tackle this on a <laughs> light level. <laughs> I don't want to have nightmares. <laughs> and then there's another one that's called coprophilia, and that's the arousal of poop, <laughs> defecation. What does copro mean? Because fecal matter. Fetophilia. I guess that doesn't sound as nice as coprophilia. Fetophilia. <laughs> Do you remember Two Girls in a Cup way back? A what while? is that? That was these two girls. This was gonna, at least. I'm going to look it up. Okay, what girl, is it called? Okay, Two Girls in a Cup. That was all the rage. Well, not all the rage. Pardon me. That was the wrong terminology. I would say it went viral back in probably about 14 or so years ago oh yeah so it was two girls who would have fecal matter in a cup oh my gosh it's yep two girls one cup is the unofficial nickname of the trailer for hungry bitches a 2007 brazilian scat fetish pornographic film yes and my girlfriend elisa turned me on to this and when i saw this my jaw went like it dropped so these girls would take a cup and it had fecal matter in it and i want to say not the not the firm type right it was soft and it looks like she's gonna pass out oh poop is and they actually would exchange this orally it was terrible it was so terrible i was like and, you know, the internet really kind of took off, I would say, about that time. Like, it's been around longer than that. But I want to say it was more accessible. It was in more households. Mm-hmm. And 14 or more years ago, maybe 15. And when that went viral, I thought, what in the heck? What is the purpose of having the internet if this is what this How is what did goes I viral? not watch that? Yeah. <laughs> I would have. Hannah, where were you? I don't right? know. I, Cause I mean, that's something that I would have watched. It's right. a fetish. Okay. I want to watch. Like that would pique my curiosity. Well, my curiosity was piqued just because mm-hmm. she said that, because I, of course it wasn't like I went in there searching. She showed me, mm-hmm. but when I told my husband about it, he was so angry with me. Oh, he's like, why would you show me that? And it just bugged him out. Like it was just too much for his mind to handle. But it's kind of like a train wreck where you can't stop watching. Right. It, um, you or know? you want to at least, I don't know, satisfy Curious. your, your mm-hmm. curiosity, even though you'd never, ever see that again. On this uh, website, it says that they actually consumed it. Oh, They consumed oh the excrement and they also vomited <sighs> into each other's mouths. Wow. Oh, and this is the thing. I wonder if the... The fact that it went viral or it was so popular then, was it more out of the curiosity or people actually digging what they were doing? Because I just can't see out of the one in six people who has a fetish, them liking that. that that's, the, that's an extreme one. I wonder if the popularity was there because of the curiosity rather than the fetish. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Thank so you for I think, rewording no, that. That's exactly it. my question. Again, it was something new that you could see online and it was so extreme. Mm -hmm. It was something like, what? These women are using the internet for this? Like, it was really bugged out. I think that's still extreme now. Yeah, where are these women now? 
Oh my god. They're probably dead. I'm just kidding. I want to know. <laughs> Inquiring mind. Okay, we're going to find out. <laughs> they got a terrible bacterial infection. Oh. And they've never been to be seen again. Um, who knows? But you know, right? you can get gonorrhea of the eye, so they must have something. They got they, you can't. You can't do that. That's not to be ingested. Oh, no, that's crazy. Well, so they, that uh, that's not, they were also probably satisfying a fetish again for people What's it called? Coprophilia? Coprophilia, uh -huh. yes. That's yeah. so gross. Ugh. Then the last one that I, I mean, there are a lot of fetishes, don't get me wrong, but the other one that people have heard of are furries. Have you heard of furries? No. Oh, so this furries. This quite educational. <laughs> <laughs> furries are people that wear, they, they almost look like, is it a onesie? Like where they, like I'm a panda oh. or I'm like a lion, but it's a whole suit. And that arouses them. They have furry conventions, but they also have furry, furry fetishes. Furry conventions? Yes. Here, let me show you. And you know you. what's funny? No matter what the heck is out there, you find you will find someone who shares that interest with you, right? You can always find a common interest with someone because more of the fetishes that we're going to talk about, there are Facebook groups or communities for that. Let me see. Oh, my goodness. Like that, see? Wasn't there like a race? <laughs> Look at these two. There's a chicken. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a chicken and a fox behind the chicken. Isn't that like from Looney Tunes? Isn't that two characters oh, yeah. from Looney Tunes? <laughs> Wait, no, it was the Roadrunner. Okay, Wait. but remember the big um oh. he he used to talk like this and he actually had a stutter. Yes. He had oh, a stutter. Yes. Oh my gosh, what was oh, his name? Oh, let's look it up. I forgot. He was a big chicken, and then there was a little chicken that he's like I'm a chicken hawk and I like chickens. And he was always trying to dominate <laughs> the big guy from Looney Tunes. And he's like, ah, ah I say now. Yes. There he is. What's his Foghorn. name? Foghorn. Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> and, then... <laughs> and there were oh, two people. That's good. Foghorn was taking it from the back. <laughs> yes. Um, where he was oh, taking it, man. we don't know. But And I guess uh, Roadrunner was giving it to him. <laughs> so they're called what? That furries. Fetish. Furries. Yes. Holy shnikes, man. I would not find... If Peter walked in with a full <laughs> costume <laughs> and he's like, I'm a gorilla or, or something, I'd be like, uh, no. No, not tonight, baby. <laughs> I am not your Jane. <laughs> oh, ew. Put me yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, my therapist friend, Annie Jacobs, I asked her what her thoughts were about fetishes. And she says that what she's seen that can be a common theme is a lot of shame and embarrassment for their fetish, depending on what it is. People will often hide that side of them and not talk about it, resulting in isolation and depression. They're afraid of not being liked, seen as being weird or a creep, being negatively judged or abandoned if others found out. Mm. Again, this isn't with everyone and every fetish, but that can be common. Yes. So I think... Like I said, you know, if you have a fetish and you have a partner, talk to them openly, but don't be mad if they say no, but at least talk about it and see if they want to try something out. Or don't yeah. be judgmental. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. that's what's going to block them and stop them from being able to. Exactly. You know, and speaking of, so now we're getting into some fetishes that might be a little bit more common. So one of them is called gerontophilia. And gerontophilia is just, and is it a man? It says that it was a, a young man attracted to elder women, like oh, okay. older women. Okay. So, and I'm assuming that the same can happen in reverse, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then you found a clip, so we'll play it for you yes. guys here. My name is Kyle. I'm 31 years old, and I love grandmas, especially yours. <laughs> Sex with older women. The truth is, they like it. A 68-year-old woman enjoys passionate, vigorous sex just as much as a 23-year-old college cheerleader. And you know what? What's he saying? That's not true. <laughs> right? A 68-year-old woman doesn't like sex as much as a 23-year-old woman? No, he's saying oh. that she likes it just as much. So that's not true? So No, I think it's true that oh, women in that age bracket, like we don't ever think, and that's where we get kind of ageist in our society, yes. we don't ever think that somebody at that age is going to be as sexy or sexual. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, 
So I wonder if anything happened in this guy's life, because now we're going to go to one that's called Lunars. This, this actually is a bigger, there's a bigger society out there. And Lunars are people who have a fetish for balloons. Um, they so love balloons. Uh -huh. And there are two types of Lunars. One like, one of them likes, um, they're called poppers and non-poppers, right? Yes. And then we're going to play a clip from the guy who is a lunar. Right. And that's going to explain a lot. There's lots of people out there that feel the same way as I do about balloons. But there's two groups uh, of the lunar group. You got the poppers that get aroused by popping balloons. And you got your non-poppers. <laughs> he's, 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 I'm he's a caressing. Non Julius' addiction to balloons started when he was hospitalized at just four years old. My mother came to visit one time and she gave me a, a real nice blue balloon. But that night, the nurse grabbed it and I heard the balloon pop. So after she left, I just cried myself to sleep. Being in the hospital is traumatizing enough. And then he was four years old. He was mm -hmm. left alone. And I think that these disorders, I don't know if you would call them somewhere, or mental fragilities for fetishes have to stem from somewhere. Now, interestingly enough, I saw this online and it said lunars of all varieties exist. And they were naming that some are conservative, some are hippies, some are doctors, lawyers, uh, physicists, policemen, garbage men. I mean, there's a community that they're naming all these different people, even mm -hmm. politicians wow. that have their, that they're lunars. By the way, we were laughing because he had a balloon <laughs> and you know, the end of the balloon that you tie <laughs> that can look like a nipple and he's caressing it <laughs> like a nipple. <laughs> That was so weird. We were like, oh my gosh, you're having a lot of fun with that. Um, so anyway, I, I tried to look online to see how many lunars there are, but I couldn't. So, oh, yeah. and our next one is mechanophilia. And you can imagine what that is. It's people who are attracted to mechanisms like cars and planes and helicopters. So we have another clip of a guy and this one's actually pretty famous. So go ahead and play the clip, Anna. Nathaniel is in a committed relationship with a car that he's named Chase. So, guys, he's he met under Chase the car in a and he's resale lot about five years ago. Love you, baby. It was love at first sight. His body and then his interior and everything just together just seemed to fit. I just felt an instant connection. Nathaniel's obsession first developed as a teenager when he would build model cars, but he didn't find true love until he met Chase. I find this part of the <laughs> So I find a couple oh. of things interesting. One, it started when he was a teenager. So mm -hmm. something had to have happened, right? Yes. I, I just don't think. And during the video, the um, in the video, he basically, and it was in My Strange Addictions, mm -hmm. right, as yes. well. He talks like this guy's a guy. He's like, we like to go out. We, this, our favorite song is... I can't stop this feeling. I can't fight this feeling any longer. Oh, you're good. Ariel Speedwagon. Oh, my gosh. Keep Ariel Speedwagon is going to be upset. They're going to be like, we don't want to be associated. But anyway, point, <laughs> point is like that. the exorcist. <laughs> Get that guy out of here. But so he acts like this is the thing. Mm -hmm. This is a thing that lives and breathes and feels. And that's what's kind of trippy about it. That is so weird. <laughs> but we're laughing because the, the footage that we were playing, he's under the hood of the car. Yes. And he's kissing it and like licking it. It's like yes. like the car is on top of him mm -hmm. and riding him and he's making <laughs> out. Now, I also know that mechanophilia, um, the people who have this, they see a tailpipe as a penetrating orifice oh. and they often use it to put their penis. What if there's rust? In. Oh, that thing's got to come out Did of they? there not looking the same <laughs> as when it <laughs> What if there's rest and then they didn't get oh, the tetanus dear. shot oh, or dear. something? <laughs> Why does your penis look like that? Oh, oh my gosh. That's got to be so weird. Yikes. But so this guy, um, what was his name? Nathaniel. Oh, Nathaniel he didn't yeah. let anyone drive the car. He would get very upset mm -hmm. and he would rub up against it. I don't know that he divulged if he had actual intercourse with the car. I guess since it's not a thing and he doesn't have to consent, he can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But 
again, I think it's a very curious thing. Why did this start when he would put model cars together? And yes. he, what satisfaction? The guy that is a lunar, mm-hmm. and he, by the way, the guy that's a lunar, he's married. The one that was like playing with the nipple of the yes. balloon. Uh huh. <laughs> and he's like, my wife knows, of course, and. She's okay with it. I mean, hey, as long as she's okay with it. They agree. <laughs> no, no freaking doubt. Okay, so guess the name. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do four. And Anna's going to guess to see if she knows what this type of fetish is. Uh, the first one is called epochrophilia. Glue? No, I'm going to give you three chances. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Eproctophilia. Okay. Um, so the name Sharp is- objects? No. Or, okay, the last one, Proctolo- proctologist? Like, what? what is a proctologist? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to give it away and I'm like, I don't know what procto- What is a proctologist? you don't know what it means, then it's not going to help you. Okay. <laughs> okay, eproctophilia uh-huh. is people who like having someone pass gas on them. Farting? Fa- yes. Yeah, flatulence. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, wait, a proctologist is a butt doctor? It's a butt doctor, yeah. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that was the name. Yes. Okay, okay, So wow. I guess that's where the term comes from, eproctophilia. Oh, wow, okay. So, th- and that's the girl that said, I guess if I dated someone and they said... Can you, I've always had a fantasy of a woman farting on me. She's like, eh, it's weird, but I'll do it. Okay. Sure. I but would. she's like, but if he's like, hey, I've always had a fantasy <laughs> of farting on your face. She'd be like, no, you know what? I'll uh-huh. pick up the tab and <laughs> have a good one. Okay. Uh, clips, if I can only pronounce okay, them. Okay. Okay. Clismophilia. There we go. Clismophilia. Clismophilia. Okay. So... For some reason, I think of a kitchen thing. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? But it's not. No. Okay. Uh, maybe oh, the little bag. It's it's um, you have something inserted inside. Can we do Pictionary? <laughs> Can you draw something? <laughs> you have inserted inside. Yes, you insert it inside, and it is in the uh, along the same theme as what we were just talking about, um, <gasps> eproctophilia. So is it like people like like. Butt plugs or um, not a anal plug, beads? not a plug, but it cleans you out. It's the water. It's the water, and they, yes, uh, yes, Anna. Oh my gosh, you're on the right track, Anna. <laughs> Starts with an E. It's like a flush, and then uh-huh. you take it if you are backed up or if you correct enema, yes. enema, yes, ding, 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 ding. Oh my gosh! So they put the enema up there, yes, and then that's what and gives I them guess arousal? it gives them, yeah. Oh. Wow, that's the cleanest person I've ever met, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, this is a really strange one, okay. and I've never heard this this one before. Herophilia. I always think of a leader. I don't know why. Uh-huh. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's oh, right. okay. But this is the leader, the biggest leader of all. The biggest leader <laughs> of all? <laughs> like Superman? Like a character? The leader that people believe in? Like God? That would... What? But what? But his son, Jesus. Yes. So people dress up as Jesus. No, oh. they th- Jesus himself gives them that arousal. No way. Yes. Is that crazy? I was like, oh gosh, that's so sacrilegious and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> right. That's a no. No. He no, no, he was no. Like, oh. And I wonder if, to a degree, that's what. I don't think nuns, I wouldn't say that at no. all. But Mm-mm. but someone who thinks, I, I knew someone that was like, yeah, Jesus is my, he's my love. He's the one, I don't need to get married because Jesus is my love. And I thought. She's it, a part of a cult. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that was so, and the way she said it, I was like, wow, that's Whoa. really out there. That's really out there. I would have never said that, you know? So, okay. And number four is acrotomophilia. Acrotomophilia. Okay, so I'm, it has to do with losing a body part. Let's put it that way. Veterans might be a lot in this category. When they're um, amputated? Yes. What? There is a culture out there of people who get aroused by amputees. That's what turns them on. Mm-hmm. And oh. I, I don't know if it's the leg itself or if it's just an appendage or wow. do you know what I mean? But yeah, can you imagine? Wow. And you know what? 
if you're into that and someone needs the love uh-huh. again, yeah. two consenting adults. Yes, exactly. Yes. Does it turn you on? Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, I don't mind that because like a person that has an amputated leg or an arm, they're still attractive, you know, yes. but a person pooping, like, I don't know. I couldn't see be, those are like, so extreme, right? Yes. Yeah. Pooping and vomiting. No. Yeah. That's you, weird. Yeah, you lost me there. Yes, exactly. Wow. Ooh, these are good. I know, right? <laughs> If you would like to be a part of our show, we would love to hear from you, ask us questions, and share your story. We'll give you our unfiltered, unprofessional, unqualified advice, record an audio clip, and send it into that's why show at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram and Facebook, and you can listen to us on all of the platforms out there. And please write us a review. <laughs> yes. I hope you guys learned something. And again, all of our shows are always geared towards expanding our knowledge because this was really wild for us we were like yo Mm -hmm. but you know what our quote our inspo quote is what is right for you may not be right for me what is right for me may not be right for you what is not right for either of us is to be told what is right for ourselves dawn so that is very apropos Mm -hmm. and with that peace love and dark chocolate see you guys thanks Bye. bye